Hi, and welcome to the Meriwether Knitting Podcast. My name is Gabriella, and I'm coming to you from my home in Germany, where I'm so excited to chat with you today about all that I've been knitting, all of my projects, and all of my creative inspiration this week. Today, I have a finished object to share with you, which is very exciting, and a couple of new cast-ons, which is also exciting, and yeah, a little bit, like, a little bit out of my comfort zone. I'm kind of testing the waters this week a little bit by casting on, having cast on two projects in one week. But I think the first thing I'm going to start with today is my finished object, which will come as no surprise if you watched my last episode. And that is my, my, uh, strawberry shortcake socks. I talked at length about these last episodes. So I don't want to talk too much about it now, but these were just such a fun, fun project. They were such a quick knit. These socks are knit out of the Regia Cotton Tutti Fruity yarn in the strawberry colorway, hence the strawberry shortcake name that I give them. And I knit them for summer sock camp. This is my first summer sock camp cast on. I cast them on actually June 2nd, not June 1st, but I, it, it's just been so much fun to knit them and they went by so quickly because they're just little shorty socks and I, I just, I love them. The yarn is a dream to work with. It's so smooth, so soft and so nice and cool on these very warm days because here in Germany, summer has arrived. It is warm. It is really warm. And for, I mean, I guess it kind of depends on your perspective. I think everything like that is kind of relative because for me, today I think it's about 30 degrees Celsius, which I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. I will put it up on the screen, but that's pretty warm for me and for us. And we don't have air conditioning. We do have an air conditioner that we brought upstairs finally, um, which we're going to be using a little bit. We have like a fan or two, but it's pretty warm. And growing up in the United States, I grew up in a place that had very hot summers and central heating and central cooling air conditioning, which made it um, like, so easy to just exist in the summer, almost like you could wear a winter coat inside and it would you'd survive. But here that is not possible <laughs> at all. So yeah, it's a little bit different for me being being having grown up in that environment and coming here and living the summers here. I always feel like extra, I don't know, it feels like really like a different time, a different world compared to what I grew up with. But I know many of you are laughing at me who don't have air conditioning or who never did and it's a very privileged thing to have had but I must say I kind of romanticized the process and the existence of summer in the heat maybe it's it's a bit I don't know I feel like in a way it's a romantic thing to to really have to just exist in it and enjoy it and it's not fun sometimes it's really not fun but there's something about it which is also just like it's just that season which is super hot and super like sticky and humid and then you get through it and it goes away and it's just yeah I don't know what it is but I, I kind of try to romanticize it it's also probably a little bit of the history buff in me I know if you've watched this podcast before you'll also know that I'm a huge history fan I like love you know historical things and books and movies and just kind of like the idea of living a little bit of an anachronistic life like lightly you know I think having no air conditioning lends itself to that. I also like to like cook in old fashioned ways and just, I don't know, it's just fun. And so I try to see it like that, you know, and I, I really enjoy it. But these socks were so much fun to knit and I am so excited to wear them. I've tried not to wear them because I wanted to show them on the podcast and not have them be completely like worn. I mean, they're not going to be, it's not like they get super warm, but I thought I'd, I try to not wear them for a couple of days, but these are going to be perfect with sneakers. These are just, I think they're going to be so cute and perfect for this time of year. Perfect for spring, just so light and comfortable and cute. And I really think they're just going to be really comfortable as far as the temperature goes wearing them too. They're super, super soft. The way I knit these was just knitting 20 rounds of one by one rib, directly going into a heel flap and gusset, and then the foot of the sock. So it's a very small, Cuff. It's, it could have been smaller too, I suppose, but I kind of wanted them to peek out out of the top of my sneakers and that's what they'll do with this cuff. So I'm just overjoyed with this finished object. It was such a satisfying project to have these socks finished. After having knit lace socks, these just flew off the needles and 
just kind of like knit themselves almost, which was wonderful. So those are my strawberry shortcake socks, which I really, really enjoyed and which are my finished object of the week. Now, immediately after casting those off, I thought, you know, this is summer sock camp. I can't let the, I can't just let the needle sit there empty. I need to cast on another pair of socks. So I was thinking, what should I do? What should I do? And so I cast on a pair which I just knit a tiny bit on. So I knit, I actually, I cast on two pairs this week. That's, that's the part of my kind of my rebellious move this week, you could say, because for me, I rarely, rarely cast on two pairs of socks at once. I don't know. I, I might have never even cast on two pairs of socks at once. I don't know what it is, but I'm kind of like a half monogamous knitter. I like to try to have a pared down amount of works in progress you know, on the needles at once because I like to have space for new projects and I feel like, I don't know what it is. I just, I just like to have, you know, like start, knit, finish. And I, cause otherwise I feel like I kind of get tired of knitting something or I kind of lose the knitting mojo needed for a certain project if I let it sit there for too long. But um, that has shifted a little bit. And Sometimes, especially with quick projects, I kind of think I'm okay with having multiple on the needles at once. And because it's summer sock camp, it's the time for sock knitting. I just thought I'm going to do it. And if I'm you know, honest, obviously seeing so many people cast on gorgeous socks for the summer sock camp knit along, which by the way is a knit along that's being hosted by Kay of the Crazy Sock Lady podcast. And it's a summer long knit along that's really fun. Um, just all about knitting all the socks, trying out new techniques. Um, Things like that. So it's really fun to participate in that. But I've seen so many people cast on multiple sock projects. And one person who I was really inspired by was Alexandra of the Fiberbound podcast. She, I mean, she has so many gorgeous socks on the needles. And she's been knitting so many gorgeous socks, like all kinds of different socks on different, like she does some on DPNs, like two circular, circular. She's just really like, I feel like just living the summer sock camp experience fully. And I honestly, on Instagram, I would like look at her posts and she takes gorgeous pictures of her projects. I was just so inspired. They looked so good and so cool. And she always has really beautiful colorways too that she uses. So I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna like live a little and I'm going to go ahead and cast on two projects. So I did, and they're very small progress so far, but um, it was a thrilling thing for me to do. So the first one I cast on is this tiny itty bitty cuff of a pair of socks that I'm going to be, these are going to be color work socks that I'm designing myself. I mean, I don't know why I'm putting air quotes. I am kind of designing it myself because I'm making the charts myself. It's kind of my own idea. Um, I mean, it is my own idea, but I've never done that before. I've never like made a chart for my own pattern that I'm making and I've never knit it myself. So I'm really being intentional and decided to do a two by two rib for that because I do feel like the two by two rib blends in a little bit more with the color work that's going to be there. So we'll see. It's going to be a very simple color work, basic color work sock. But I have this 50 gram little skein of Yavol. I think it's Lang yarns. I'm not sure, but the yarn is Yavol and it's just, I think, a 75-25 um, wool nylon blend. This is the cream or off-white colorway, which is really cute. And I'm excited to have it, yeah, to knit it and to knit these little socks. And I have a different colorway for the body and the color work, but I'll show you that later when I make more progress. I also don't have it with me here. The second little new cast on that I have to show you is one that I've made a lot more progress on and you'll see easily why. And it's this gorgeous self-striping, very fun, colorful yarn. This yarn is an opal yarn. And a couple of months ago, I had ordered three balls of yarn from this opal line. This is the line that's called Hundertwasser. It's like the Hundertwasser line, which is all, every single colorway is inspired by an artwork done by the artist Hundertwasser. And I don't know his first name, but Hundertwasser, I'll say it again, is his last name. And that's what each one of these colorways is inspired by, one of his artworks. So I had already knit a pair for Nick out of one of these yarns. And I had used the other colorway as like a heel and toe, I think, or just a heel. I think heel and toe. It was a couple of months ago. 
Um, but I saw this colorway in my stash. I don't have a huge stash and I don't have very much sock yarn in my stash, but I thought this is the perfect yarn for right now. The perfect colorway for summery, I don't know, summery knit, even if it is wool. Socks, you can knit in wool. They're just so small. It's easy to carry them around and it's not too, too heavy or anything. So I decided to cast it on. And this colorway is called um, Autobusfenster, which means car bus window. Or I asked Nick, my husband, what an autobus is. Autobus, he said he never really understood the difference. He thinks it's just a bus. Um, so if you are a German speaker or a German native and you know the difference between a bus and an autobus, tell me, but I think it's just bus window is the name of this colorway. I will put the artwork here so you can see how the original art piece of art looks. And then you can compare it to the sock yarn and the colorway. So. I think it really looks like a wonderful rendition, a wonderfully inspired colorway. I think it really looks like the artwork, but my husband Nick was like, it doesn't look anything like the artwork at all. Very German about it, very direct. He just really was like saying, no, it doesn't look like the artwork, but I think it does. I think it really looks like a good inspiration and good, well-inspired colorway. And um, my husband Nick is, an artist and a musician and he's also he also studied art history so he really like I don't know I respect his opinion very very much and he taught me a lot he also like told me about a little bit about Hondas Vasa um the things that he knew we read them together a little bit more about him and about this specific artwork no I just find the colors used in this really unique and really cool and this colorway is just I don't know something something special because it is self-striping but the stripes are pretty spread apart and pretty unique. Like, as you can see here, there's not been a repetition yet. This is like kind of a crazy, wild, beautiful yeah. ride. This line here is my, or my afterthought heel waist yarn stitches because I'm knitting an afterthought heel, which for me is a kind of a, a little bit of an off thing. I don't usually knit afterthought heels. I love knitting um, just heel flap and gusset socks. It's just my favorite way of knitting sock heels at the moment, but I thought for summer sock camp, I've got to shake things up in some way. I can't just constantly be knitting plain old socks that I'm used to. I mean, of course you can, it's, it's not a rule, but I wanted to step outside of my comfort zone or just do something unusual. So I decided an afterthought heel is a simple way to do that. And I'm also knitting these on bamboo needles. These are also nine inch circular needles. I'm in the nine inch circular cabin all around. All the socks I'm knitting are nine inch circulars. I had considered knitting a pair on DPNs, but I just love these nine inch circular needles. With these, I have noticed that my gauge is a bit looser than usual, and I'm uh, a little nervous about it. I cast on 64 stitches, which is my usual number that I cast on when knitting socks for myself. These are going to be socks for myself, but I'm just noticing that they're just really giant actually. And so I might, I'm thinking about if these are really too big for me, I'm gonna go ahead and give them to Nick, and just knit the foot super long and give him these socks and he can wear them with his sneakers and he can like I think these would look super cool for a man if like you know this peeks up and he's wearing like a white t-shirt and like jeans or like you know jean um shorts or like bermudas or something he said he would wear them at first when I asked him do you want me to knit socks for you out of these he was like no it's okay those are more your color scheme but um he then agreed, if they're too big for me, he'll take them, which is very gracious of him. And I think, I, I hopefully they're not though, because I would love them. I just knit a little cuff and a little bit like of the leg here. So it's also pretty short, but not a very, very short shorty, a little bit of a shorter sock though. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I thought about doing the Rose City Roller socks. I thought about doing the, like I thought about doing a regular long cuff, but Something about the long cuff, I just didn't feel like it. I think these little socks, these strawberry shortcake socks that I just knit oh, were so much fun that I really like the little miniature cuff. So yeah, these are going to be spring and summer socks, more like spring socks, I guess, because they're still kind of warmer with the wool. But yeah, that's my second little cast on work in progress and I'm really enjoying them. I'm just knitting in the round, knitting in the round, and I'm going to measure them soon, like just to see how wide they are and if they are going to be more for Nick or for me then I'll know and then I'll just knit them all the way knit the foot finished 
and cast them off either for me or for him and then the heel which i'm hoping that that goes by quickly that i'll have a pair of these gorgeous autobus fensta colorway socks or um yeah car window colorway socks i just think it's so so funny and such a cool yeah colorway inspiration next i'm going to share with you my elizabeth the first project progress and then i'll share with you my couple of new patchwork squares so Last week I had showed you that I had finished the first half of the body, the first part. I loosely blocked it, very lightly blocked this piece, so you can't really tell. I feel like it didn't, especially when it's not laying flat, but you can see maybe a little bit better how it looks. Oh, it's a very beautiful, beautiful design, and I blocked it very lightly. I pinned it out to measurement, and then I took dishcloths, wet them, like dampened them, and then laid them on top of the piece of knitting and let those cloths dry. It said to do that in the book. And I think I used, yeah, I don't know if you're supposed to use dishcloths. You're probably supposed to use, use like regular bath towels. Maybe, I'm not sure, but I just wanted to lightly, lightly block it. I didn't necessarily want it to be like completely blocked. I just wanted to see how it would look. But I think that is even maybe blocked enough. It's not like you stretch it out a ton either. It's a piece which is just, very lightly adjusted to the correct measurements. Um, I'm very pleased with my gauge as well in this project. I think it turned out really, really well, which, I mean, this first piece turned out really well, which makes me very happy just because it is such a special piece for me. And this is the second half. I have been knitting the body kind of slowly but surely and knitting along finish the bottom part and i'm just knitting a bunch of the body already on the darts and the shaping which is really exciting this piece as you saw is full of gorgeous shaping like true hourglass shaping which is a lot of fun to knit and a really satisfying beautiful thing to see when you're finished with the piece just that dramatic line and dramatic curve and if you didn't already know this is a project that i'm knitting for a very special knit along called the Tudor Rose Knit Along that I'm hosting along with two other podcasters, Bella of 100 Acre Wool and Sophie of the Berka Creations podcast. And we're hosting this knit along this, the whole entire year of 2021, in which we're knitting patterns from the Tudor Roses book by Alice Starmore. And it's just a book full of gorgeous patterns. It's been so much fun to knit this from this book and knit this pattern. I absolutely adore it. I'm knitting this beautiful garment out of Hebridean two-ply yarn from Virtual Yarns, which is the Starmore Yarn Company. And here you can see gorgeous colorway. Oh, there it is. This is the Macare colorway in the Hebridean two-ply, and it's just beautiful. It's very graciously sent to me by Virtual Yarns, and I've savored every moment knitting with this yarn. I've really savored this project, and I feel like I still am savoring it. I love working on it. I work on it a little bit every day, I would say, just a few rows every day. Um, sometimes more, sometimes less, depending on the day, of course, but in the evenings, it cools down quite a bit, and I like to just sit down and just get a few rows done on this project. I love the process of knitting on this yarn, too. It's, it is a rustic yarn, but it has a pretty soft hand for being such a rustic yarn. I really, I really just enjoy it. I love the colorway. I also think the colorway suits almost, it's almost like appropriate for all seasons so for me I always see green as a neutral shade for me I love green it's one of my favorite colors to wear and I know I'm not the only one I know there are others who also love green and wear it all year round but there are other colors that I just I like adore but only for certain parts of the year like for example green uh orange orange is one that I wear and I love often in autumn and like rust I love like those colors I love wearing them in autumn but when spring rolls around, I really want light, bright colors. I want even pastel colors, and it's very hard to find pastels that suit me, but I love to wear the ones that I can. And, and even if they don't suit me, I still wear them, honestly. I just, I love those soft, petally colors, floral colors. And yeah, I mean, summer and winter are kind of like between those two, but all year round, I can wear green. Even like, even sp any shade of green. This shade of green, I feel like it's really, for me a real neutral so yeah i've really been enjoying this project still i'm excited to wear it eventually but right now it's just one of those amazing slow 
knits that I'm just savoring every stitch of. And I'm carrying and holding this project in my Noble Character Crafts bag that is beautiful. Look at that gorgeous bag. It's so stunning and it's just the perfect bag for this project. Um, I think Amy even recently did a shop update with lots of gorgeous project bags. So if you're interested, you should definitely check out her shop. I have the link below in the description box so you can find it there and pick a bag up for yourself too, hopefully. So that is my Elizabeth the First project. I, my progress, the little bit of progress I've made. The next thing I want to share with you is my patchwork blanket, which I've made a couple, I've knit a couple of squares since I last showed it to you. So I'll show you the little updated piece. And I don't know, one of the squares is really not exciting. I don't know if I can show you this or not, but it is a very bright neon pinkish color that was from a pair of socks that I had knit for myself a couple of years ago. And I loved this color. I loved knitting with it. It's actually kind of like a another kind of almost self-striping self yarn that had bright blues in it too. And at the time when I knit this colorway and the socks, they always make me think of like a Southwestern sunset. I don't know if that's really what the colorway was inspired by or if I thought of that myself. I think it might be that the colorway is actually really called like sunset sky or Southwest or something. I'm not sure. But in my mind, I thought of a Southwestern sunset with these just this vibrant, bright, beautiful, pink, peachy, warm pink color. And then the blue, the flashes of blue as well. And um, speaking of artists, Georgia O'Keeffe is one of my very favorite artists of all time. And if you are not familiar with her art, you should definitely look at it and, you know, just Google her name and look at her beautiful artwork. She lived in, I think, New Mexico. I might be wrong, but she painted beautiful paintings inspired by the Southwestern landscape. And I've never been a person who really likes the desert. The desert doesn't have a huge draw for me. My sister loves the desert and is a photographer and takes, has taken gorgeous photos of the desert. And actually in Esmeralda's room, I have a beautiful desert photo I'm hanging up that my sister took. Photograph. I feel like I need to say photograph because she's like a photographer and she always like, she's very, a very serious photographer. Okay. But, um, <laughs> I really, I don't know. I, George O'Keefe's art, I'll put a piece of her artwork here that kind of shows what I'm talking about if I can find one or just one so you can kind of see her style. She has just this beautiful use of color and she captured, I feel like, this this feeling and this like the essence of what you imagine when you think of a gorgeous desert landscape and especially specifically what I think of in the American Southwest this these beautiful vibrant pinks um and blues and just these tonal hues are so stunning and um this colorway reminded me a little bit of her artwork when I knit with it and here even too slightly although it's a little bit more neon than maybe Georgia O'Keeffe would have painted with but I still think it's gorgeous. So that's the first square that I have. I hope that I didn't show you that. I hadn't shown you that before. I, I might have, but the next one I did was just this one, which is this kind of tropical colorway, which I have two other times in this blanket already. But I kind of think this little tropical like flare adds something because so many of these colors are like purpley colors. I'm not sure. It's, it's difficult. I'm not, I'm kind of making it up as I go, just knitting as I go and choosing colorways kind of randomly without a, much of a plan, but I want this to be a wild, beautiful, scrappy looking project, but I also want it to have a little bit of balance in it, you know, as much as possible. So um, I feel like that's happening and throwing this here and there, I think has helped a little bit. I'll try to put another one at the top because my plan is to knit five rows of five and then to knit another square like that. And then to do, put two, either two kind of cream or speckled giant squares there, or maybe to do two other squares that are kind of like checkered with white or speckled yarn. I'm not sure. We'll see what happens. But my first task is just to finish this square and it's going along very smoothly and very nicely. And I've, I've loved it. Oh yeah. And this one here is just a pretty plum colorway that also suits and kind of blends in with the rest there. So there we have it. That's my little patchwork blanket update. I'm enjoying this scrappy project so much. It's been the perfect scrappy project. And thank you so much to those of you who have encouraged me to just go ahead and frog that big spiral blanket I had, that spiral scrappy blanket I had knit a few years ago. 
I just, it, I don't know what it is, why it's such a block for me, but I just need to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to frog it and use that yarn for this project because I will enjoy it so much more. And also those are bad memories with those moths in there. It just, it has ruined the blanket for me. So I'm gonna enjoy frogging it and just using the yarn for this project. But that's all that I have to share with you knitting wise today. I see that my friend is just arriving to our home. I thought I had more time, but I didn't. So I have to now go suddenly, but it's been so lovely to have you. I'm so glad that you could join me for a little bit of knitting chat. If you would like to find me somewhere, you can find me on Instagram as Meriwether Knitting, and you can also find me on Ravelry as Gabriella K. And you can also feel free to join the Ravelry group. I'd love to have you there and to hear from you. Um, otherwise, I'll see you again next week for more knitting talk. Can't wait to, wait to see you then. Bye.